Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can use some of the auto connector tools that we have under our connector workflow. So I got this model here. I'm going to go under the connectors ribbon and you'll notice that under each of the connector creation types, point, fastener, line, we have this little um, electrocution sub icon, this like little lightning sub icon. And so when you hover your cursor over each of these lightning sub icons here, you'll get options to create these types of connections automatically. So let's first, let's take a look at the auto point connector type. Okay. So what the auto point connector type will let us do is create connector points throughout, you know, some, some series of parts that we're connecting automatically. So we can create a whole bunch of these points automatically with these tools. All right, so going into the advanced options here, we have some options for, you know, like how many of these point connections we'll create, um, you know, what the distance between each of these connector points will be and things like that. Uh, so going through some of these, uh, I like to create the connector icons in the middle. So it'll create the, the little icons, connector icons in between each of the components that I'm connecting. So that's just a personal preference I like to set. Uh, we can determine number of layers. So basically like how many components we're connecting here. In this case, we're just connecting this bracket to this channel. So we'll do two. For our search distance here, you know, this will be our, our gap here in between our two plates. So let's go ahead and just measure that real quick. So I'm gonna go measure here. Let's measure this corner to that corner. Looks like we're seeing a gap of about two and a half there. So, you know, any tolerance above that will allow us to uh, create connections or define connections between these two parts. Um, but for some of the other parameters uh, in the auto point options, like, you know, the pitch between the number of, of connectors, uh, it'll be good to see kind of what our mesh size is here. So it looks like we're seeing an element size of, of five, about five here. So. We'll go back into our auto point options here. Okay, so for search distance, that was that tolerance. Here we'll just put 10. That should be enough to, to capture that gap between our two components. All right, the spot pitch distance. So this is the distance between each connector point it creates. So in that case, you know, if we want one connector along like each node here, we can do uh, pitch distance equal to that element length. So we'll do five here for that pitch. And the spot pitch offset will determine the offset from each end from the flange that it'll basically start creating the connectors. So for example, if you wanted to like skip these two edge nodes on each end, we could input a pitch end offset of 10, right? Because if you remember, we had an element size of, of five there. So we'll apply some offset. Um, I'm going to define these connections just right on this free edge here, but maybe if you wanted to define the connectors on like the, the sort of inner, um, this like inner line here, then you could maybe input a distance from the free edge of maybe about five would probably be that element length there, but we'll, we'll use zero here. And you can also provide some distance from like some feature edge if you had like a gap or something like that uh, in, in that panel. All right, and just one other option here. I'm gonna also exclude holes with the width less than about 10 so that it doesn't create uh, these point connectors here where we have holes on, on these free edges here. So basically here, it'll provide nodes or create um, connections, connector points along this edge and should give us connecting points along these two edges here. Basically any edges where you have um, parallel panels between your two parts you're connecting. So with all those options set, we'll go ahead, select both of our components and hit play. All right. So this is what I meant by the creating the connectors in the middle here, right? So it's creating those little connector icons in between the two components that I'm connecting. Again, that's just a personal preference that I like. Uh, and you can also see, right, that, that gap, that, uh, that offset gap that I've provided. So what this does is it, it defines some connections that I can see in the connector browser if I go connectors right here. 
So I can check out my points. And you'll notice these are yellow, meaning they're unrealized. So basically, we've defined what we're connecting, these two components, and where they're being connected at each of these points. But we haven't defined how we're um, connecting those points, or how we're making those connections. So for that, via the connector controls up here. So if I go controls, let me get rid of my pre-existing ones here. And let me create a new point control. So for here, I'm just going to do rigids. So I'm going to call this rigid points. For my type, I'll choose rigid here. And I'll set the tolerance, leave the tolerance set to 10. So now I can come back over here to all my points, control A, and then specify that connector control. And from here, with all of those point connectors still highlighted in my connector browser, I can right click, realize, and there we go. Now we've defined RB2 rigid connections at each of those connection points. So pretty easy. Uh, I can do something similar with lines as well. So if I do delete connectors in FE, I could also do that same process, but create uh, line connections. So by choosing combine spots to lines, I can create those line connections, or I can come up here and create auto lines as well. So search distance, we'll leave as 10. Uh, minimum length, I'll choose zero here. And for the whole exclusion radius, yeah, we'll leave that as 10 so that it excludes creating line connections at these whole locations. And for the spacing, we'll just do zero. So do that again, select those components, hit play. And kind of similar like how we had before with each of those spot connectors at each of those edges, we now have line connections at each of those edges. All right. I can similarly create a line control. So I can right click, create a rigid line here. Change the type to rigid. And now we can go over to our line tab in our connector browser and do the same thing, right? We'll apply that connector control and then right click realize. All right, looks like they didn't realize properly. Let's check. So these connector browsers give you an error message that will usually tell you why the connectors may not be realizing. So in this case, we may just need to update to remove those overlapped 1D elements. So we'll right click, update, and there we go. So we've created a line connection. You can also do auto fasteners as well. So if we do auto fasteners, we can search for min and max hole diameter. So let's say we wanted to create some fastener connections at these holes. Let's maybe just first measure the diameters. Okay, diameter of six. So yeah, a diameter search in between zero and 10 should pick up those holes. We'll do zero, 10. Tolerance, so that was again, the gap between our two components, which in this case was about two and a half. So the tolerance of 10 should pick that up, okay. All right, and with those preferences set, we'll select our components. Let's just select our bracket and our channel. Hit play. And now we have those three connectors defined at each of those fastener holes. So again, we haven't completed the connection here. We've just defined what we're connecting and where. So again, we need to create that fastener control now. So we'll do right click, create, and we're going to create a rigid fastener here. So for our type, we'll just do a general bolt. Okay. So assign that fastener control, right click, realize, there we go. Oops. Set that right there. 
Now we can see our rigid fastener connection we just made. So this definitely has a lot of benefits, especially if you have like a big model, maybe you're, you know, you have like hundreds or even thousands of connections. You can definitely use these auto point, auto fastener, or auto line tools to create those connections automatically and then just create, you know, a single fastener control for each different type of fastener that may that uh, these connectors may have and then assign those fastener controls in bulk or those connector controls in bulk, whatever connector type they may be. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys.